Hey Rat Bags, it's Jay. Today I'm giving you a good tips guide, start guide to return to Modia. I sunk a huge amount of time in the beta and I played a chunk of it obviously on release day, so I feel like I'm ready to go and give you some tips to survive and delve even deeper into this Lord of the Rings survival mashup game. If you're enjoying it, do leave a like. If you're thinking about buying the game, go ahead and use my code and a link in the comment section down below to help support the channel. And a little reminder, PlayStation fans, the game is coming to you on December the 5th, and hopefully this guide will still be pretty good for you then. Okay, some quick and easy stuff that you might have missed. This game obviously has your dwarves that you can transfer between worlds. You can join your friends' worlds, and you can obviously take the same dwarf to multiple worlds that you curate. This is obviously a big cheese. If you're looking for a quick fix of iron, but you're well deep into the game, and you don't have to run all the way back, you could in theory go ahead and just load up another world, gather all the iron from it, and then come back to the main world. You can load up your dwarf with any items you find, weapons and equipment, but you won't necessarily always carry recipes over. Certainly not in multiplayer. So if you have unlocked advanced materials, you can take them advanced materials and give it to your friend in his world but he won't necessarily have that recipe unlocked so that he can just go ahead and get it by bypassing parts of the game. The game will scale depending on how many players are in it but generally by the amount of enemies you find rather than the health of normal creatures at least anyway. The tutorial will guide you pretty well through the early stages so I don't really want to teach you how to eat biscuits. Something pretty obvious that some people might have missed is it is procedurally generated. Every time you break through that dirt, the idea is you could be going into a different tile set than someone else's world or any other worlds that you've created. In reality, there's a lot of tile sets that are always going to be there in the same order. You've got the tutorial ones, and then you're always going to have things like the Elven Quarter, Balin's Rest, and more. Some of these special tile areas will be in slightly different directions, but generally it will be more or less a same distance away or very close to it. So it can freshen up playthroughs a bit, but not until you really start to explore past the actual mines of Moria itself. And then once you're exploring one of these zones, you can find different spawn points for enemies, but generally the layout will be the same for resources. You should more or less always find certain minerals in the same spots in these tiles, but the minerals themselves might change and it might be not coal, instead it might be iron. You'll notice a lot more when you get to the Elven Quarter and realise there's a lot of ore that you can get nearby the river that you may have to build some platforms to go ahead and mine. And this is where I noticed as well, jumping into a multiplayer world, that lots of the statues were in different locations as well as some of the bear spawns. A lot of the goblin encampments too were in different locations ever so slightly. But the main points are there. You're always going to find the forge in exactly the same location. As I said, the general layout of these zones will always be the same. The light is your friend. Obviously having a torch out to help you see is great. And you can see it gives you a small indicator that yes, you've got your light on in the bottom left. If it goes too dark, you can start to get a despair debuff. This can stop you from healing and can actually cause you health damage over time, but also alerts more enemies to your presence. So it's a good idea to light as many brazers up as you can along the way, but in the early stages, obviously in the tutorial areas, don't mess about too much with this. Don't make a big massive base in the very first place you come to, which is often where you meet Arik. If you just go around the corner, you'll find more places that actually have ready-made crafting stations like the forge. You just simply have to give them a few more resources. It's much cheaper to do this than actually building your own. As you go further through the game, you'll find many more of these areas with all sorts of crafting stations, repair benches and more, and it's always usually cheaper to go ahead and repair these or fill them up and then actually make your own. You won't necessarily have to come back to this starting area anytime soon for a good while, so it doesn't really make sense to make your main base here. You just want to do enough to get you started and hopefully craft a few of the basic items. You will get attacked by walls pretty rapidly though, and if you are being attacked by a lot of goblins regularly, then make sure you've got plenty of lights around you and you have put up some rudimentary defenses. Obviously walls are going to be your best bet, but do remember lots of enemies can break through eventually. Energy and stamina is a big part of the game, that's why you see them coloured bars anytime you're in combat. 
well, normally, anyway, they should pop up. One of them is obviously your stamina bar, and as you use up your stamina, then yes, it's going to drain more, and eventually you'll be fatigued. The other blue bar that pops up next to it is your overall energy bar. Once that's depleted, that's when they'll start taking chunks out of your stamina permanently until you actually rest for the night. There's a variety of different buffs and debuffs which we'll probably go over in a more advanced video on their own but things like this are really good obviously when you don't have a bag because you've maybe died you will get a small quick speed buff. Never pass up the opportunity to also take a look at Dwarven Remains as this gives you a quick speed boost as well. Once you go ahead and craft five of these together you will then get a special altar and this will give you that buff anytime you pray at it. You also get a debuff as well that affects your stamina if you are hungry and likewise being too cold can be pretty bad for you as well. A lot of these debuffs do happen at night time so the best advice is to avoid running around at night. Use that time to go ahead and craft or gather resources really close to your base and try and make big manoeuvres across the map in the daytime. There will be more patrols of creatures in great numbers at night time as well. As soon as it starts hitting dusk, that's the time for you to get moving and head back to base. You'll be okay during the night, but you see in the bottom left now it's hit the dark, I'm starting to lose health. Now you can actually use natural light like you see here from some sort of crevice, that will give me a tiny bit of a boost, but your best bet is to try and get back to a base or make yourself a hearth pretty quick. Leave it too long and if you're in despair and in the dark, you can trigger a base raid. These can be super tough with lots of multiple enemies spawning to basically come and take you out. So once you've explored deeper into the game a bit, you've got the essentials and you're thinking about a good base location for now, do make sure you've got plenty of walls around you. If you really need a certain crafting bench, you can go ahead and dismantle it as well as obviously other base parts that you want to change or mix up. You simply have to go into the build menu, choose an item to build and then come out of it. Instead of placing it, press LT, using the controller for me at least anyway, and then you can go ahead, aim at what you want and dismantle it using the RT button. This will work on things that you have helped rebuild rather than make from scratch, but you won't necessarily get any resources back or only a small tiny amount. As said, you will come across plenty of other crafting stations, including repair benches, plenty of forges and hearths. So it's not really worth dismantling everything in case you do have to backtrack a little bit and you want some more stuff to be able to craft at. Don't try spending forever looking for certain stuff like this ruined map stone. That's one of the fast travel options you'll discover later. It asks you to find a black diamond and you won't find them for absolutely ages. There's quite a lot of that in Return to Moria. You'll come across items or recipes that require certain stuff, you just won't be able to get it until you progress through the main story of the game. In that respect, it is kind of gated, so do make sure you follow the tutorial. Duh, it's pretty obvious. But in survival sandbox games, it's often easy to go off and do your own thing. And obviously you want to just spend your time building your base, that's on you. But yeah, if you feel a little bit stuck, or you're wondering where to get certain stuff or resources or items, always always refer back to the story. When it comes to combat and gathering resources the axe is always your friend for killing creatures and chopping down trees. Your pickaxe is always the best item to use to go ahead and demolish walls, debris and any of the junk that you find in ruins. Even wooden looking stuff the pickaxe will still do a lot more damage. You can defend with a weapon but you don't want to be doing that too long because your weapons can break and without that repair bench you're going to be pretty stuck, stuck with just using your fists. The pickaxe sucks as a weapon also. So first order of business is to get yourself a shield as soon as possible. If you hold block and press the attack button you should do a charge with your shield and specifically for goblins and orcs this can actually put them on the floor and you'll be able to get even more hits in them. Doesn't always work very well against other creatures though like wolves. I'm sure you've worked out by now, by holding the attack button you can have a much stronger powerful hit. You don't want to necessarily be defending using your shield forever though because again the durability eventually will break and then you'll be pretty much without a shield. 
Never cook more than one or two meals, depending on what it is, it might refill your health and food all the way to the top. Otherwise, you may need two meals to make sure that you've got the well-fed bath. And effectively, you always want to eat them literally when you wake up in the morning. So if you've only got a tiny bit of food or health going, but it's about to be night time, make sure you sleep during the night and then get your food in you. There's no instant healing items until you find Lembus bread, which you won't be able to make yourself until much later. But you can find it in certain chests. In the first zone of mines, pretty much the west gate, you'll find lots of statues that will give you recipes for armors and maybe some new weapons. Each zone that you're in will have a set amount of armor, so you're never going to find a tier 3 armor set in the beginner zones just because of random chance. It is kind of gated the progression in terms of armor and gear that you find. So bear that in mind once you're repairing any of the statues. As soon as you start hitting getting gold coins from a statue instead of a brand new blueprint or part of the blueprint, then you know that the rest of the statues in that area are only going to give you more gold coins. So you could probably save your stone until later and then come back for it if you want to build up your piles of gold, which can be used as decoration later. And each new zone you go into, there'll be more new statues with more new blueprints. So it's always checking. You'll know you're in a new zone because it normally has a proper title come up on the screen. And generally it will be revealed on the minimap properly once you start breaking through some of the walls. There are some schematics or items you'll find that you won't get the payoff for until much, much later. Durin's Axe, the first part you'll find, will always be in the same spot with the statue on the table in the ruins nearby but you won't get the rest of these parts until much, much later. Really pay attention to the tiers of weapons though. Some will be tier one, tier two. If you come across two unlocks that will both be tier one, do you really need to craft a sword and the great ax? You wanna conserve that iron because you're gonna need it for more important things later on, especially crafting more steel as that's one of the recipes that you need iron for. And a bit of an obvious one, but again, just like food, don't craft up too much of your ores into ingots as some late recipes like steel require the raw ore rather than ingots. Also if you're not seeing any weapons or armor actually show up in your forge then make sure you're actually looking in all the forges. You do have these static ones that you can only craft this special gear here. You can see the recipe list if you press X while in inventory menu looking at your recipes or crafting options and it will show you the workbench that they can be crafted in. I thought my game was bugged out since I wasn't seeing any of these new recipes that I was finding until I realized I had to go to the Great Furnace of Na'vi. You will find lots of different types of chests with loot. Some can be accessed by finding the little statues that you've got scattered around the world. And each one of these special altars or plimps will only unlock with the statues found in that zone. Once you've got enough, you then have to go and craft a key and it'll open up the chest, hopefully giving you new recipes sometimes or just resources. So don't necessarily bolt past every ruins that you come across as you may have to scour deep and wide for them to see if they've got any of the carvings. And while I'm watching this clip, don't do what I did there, destroying a nice keg that had a good amount of liquid inside it still. Once you've opened that chest in that one area, you won't need any more of them carvings and I don't think there's anything you can really do with them, so you might as well drop them and save that space for more better gear. And there's loads of these little altars scattered all throughout the world, especially when you go into a new zone. You should find one close or in Moria or just the Elven Quarter, and there'll be more of them statues to find along the way in that new zone. The other loot that you can get is from killing any of the goblin men and taking out the burning effigy that usually is in the front or the middle of their camp. This should drop a key to the chest nearby, but grab it quick, as I've found a few times now it's slipped under the map. So far the loot in these chests has been pretty general rather than any brand new recipes or anything. And some chests can just be opened by simply having the resources. Like the first chest you come to in that first starter area that, that you can open with iron ingots. Once you go and interact with it, it should give you the recipe for Ori's key. That seems pretty obvious, right? You do have to interact with a lot of stuff to get the recipes for items, especially new weapons and refined stuff like the steel ingots. And that's where I'm going to leave this very basic start guide. Once you get into the Elven Quarter, you will have to start up this furnace. But don't go ahead and craft the components. You can find all three very close by. The crank should be on the floor very, very close to it. So simply just go and place it on. 
look around a little bit further and you should find the cog or the gear and you just need to go up the stairs on the other side and you'll see it marked by the yellow highlight. And the third and final piece might be the one that's hardest to find as that's usually near the first goblin man encampment just outside the main doors of the forge. <laughs> so obviously you'll have to take got. them out and then you should find it somewhere in this area. If for some reason you cannot find these pieces whatsoever, maybe they have glitched or just you've been joining a friend's world or friends have joined your world and trolled you somehow, you can go ahead and craft these but it is going to cost a lot of iron ingots. Big Brain's IQ move here, if you haven't set up an encamp, which is probably the best thing to do, you can actually throw this piece onto the broken stairways and then go ahead and just put a small wooden platform down so that you can climb up and place it. Be careful though, once it's placed and once the forge is triggered, obviously it will cook up. You will immediately be set upon though by a massive invasion of the horde. So it's actually a good tip to take off all your armor, all your weapons, and pretty much just get killed after a few minutes, as this will normally make the horde disappear. Rather than have to repair your items for a cost, it's honestly something you can do. There might not be many places to hide though, enemies can sometimes spawn up here, just like that. You could try fighting them off and I'm sure it's probably doable but it did seem like more and more enemies will just carry on spawning with seemingly no end in sight and that happened in my multiplayer playthrough as well. The small goblins are only one hit kills but the larger ones are going to take a bit more. Although it is a good opportunity to pick up a ton of the coins by killing as many of these enemies as possible if you want to make more coin piles. The elven quarter is filled with tougher enemies, new resources like the elven wood, and plenty of new foods, you'll also find lots of new ruins to go ahead and make a new outpost in. So definitely utilize the area, just make sure you avoid the bears as they're pretty deadly. I'm going to have individual guides for each zone and showing you every piece of armor that you get from one, so whether or not it's worth backtracking for some. But hopefully that's been more than enough to get you started in Return to Moria. Let me know if it's helpful and look out for more guides and live streams from me. Until next time, Ratbags, laters.